There have been recent homicides linked to disturbing paintings, depicting the victims in disrespectful and nightmarish ways. The police desperately looks for leads and clues to apprehend the murderer, putting an end to the series of grisly murders. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and thanks to whoever recommended this analog horror series to me, I'm struggling to sleep now. Anyway, I don't want to suffer alone, so I present to you urban spook. All jokes aside, this is a fantastic analog horror crime series, and uh, without much further ado, let's get right into it. The first video in this horrifying series is called Faces, where we learn about a chain of horrific murders which shocked and baffled the community and the police. Six months ago, the police finds a number of paintings in an abandoned storage area, each titled after each murder. The first victim was Carla Gray, who was stabbed multiple times and had her teeth removed. The first painting is titled Carla's Teeth, which has an unsettling depiction of a set of teeth, mocking and ridiculing Carla's corpse and the painful way that she had to die. Second victim, called Jackie Graham, was drowned and also stabbed, this time in her private parts, who was alive during the savage murder, with her painting titled as Floating Jackie. The painting depicts the victim just having her face above the water surface, a sadistic depiction of the killer finding these murders like an art piece and getting pleasure from them. The third victim was called James Miller, who was found without a face and cut arms. James was discovered to have been alive several days without his face, who eventually dies from infection or blood loss. The painting dedicated to him is titled James' Secret Face, depicting a defaced skull. Rightfully so, these depictions worry and concern the police, finding this to be a lead which could direct them to the killer. Four months after finding the paintings, more paintings are discovered. However, the paintings and the names mentioned on these paintings do not seem to connect to any recent murder cases. These horrifying paintings straight from depths of nightmare show a variety of ways the victims could have been killed, each being more tragic and devastating than the other. The police concern these must be the ways the killer intends to kill their new victims. They go public with the investigation to warn people and stop the killer from enacting his sadistic fantasies. That's when the police receive three new photos in the mail which depict the victims, James Miller, Jackie Graham, and Jimmy. This investigation goes on for a while, up until two days ago, when the police finds a painting titled a self-portrait depicting a horrifying person with a deep and sharp stare. In the next video called The Lighthouse, a police officer by the name of Bell Collins goes missing alongside his family, two daughters and his wife. The disappearance seemed to have been an act of abduction, something that was premeditated as they find a painting titled Self-Portrait in his house before going missing, not knowing how he got there. As the authorities search Colin's house, they find one of his daughters savagely killed, whose corpse is found in the attic. Twelve days later, Colin's car was found by the ocean, which has a painting inside, titled Long-Necked Angel. That happens to be the painting dedicated to their two-month-old daughter, whose corpse was found in the attic, who happens to be called Angel. The police, horrified, searched the area, coming across an abandoned lighthouse just a few miles away from the car, which happens to have an abstract painting of a face on its door. Inside, they find the charred corpse of a victim called Daniel Williams, who happens to be one of the victims who had a painting the police found months ago. This in a way suggests that the killer had already targeted his victim and was preying on them, having already formed his deranged fantasies of the method that he wants to kill, just waiting for the right moment to enact his vision. Walking through the tunnel underneath the lighthouse, the police finds two more corpses belonging to Jennifer White and her daughter, Lisa White. They have been missing for seven months, two more victims who had paintings dedicated to them. The tunnel leads to barrels filled with remains of some corpses, which, after testing, reveals to belong to the Collins family. The test also reveals amphetamine was used on them. Disturbing images depicting the family were scattered around the barrel containing their remains. There's one final photo, which doesn't seem to belong to the family, which shares close resemblance to the painting titled Self-Portrait. The new video begins by displaying the images of two children, the big twins aged 11 
Corey and Margaret, who went missing 10 days ago. After five days, their bodies were discovered inside an abandoned paper mill factory. The twins sadly were found in a disturbing manner, having parts of their bodies missing while the parts found were sewn together. Their death was so brutal and unsettling that I won't go over the grisly details as the video might get taken down. It's a sort of horror you would not wish on your worst enemy, let alone children. The police horrified by the crime scene desperately look for leads to put an end to the psychotic chain of murders to save potential victims. That's when, from witness reports, they learned Corey had been dared by his friends to spend an hour in an abandoned cabin near Tiger Lake, which happens to be in the middle of a forest. This is a few weeks before the twins go missing. Corey takes his digital camera with him while his friends wait outside. It doesn't take long before Corey runs out screaming, claiming that he had seen a face. His left arm was reported by his friends to have been badly bruised. The police takes the lead and investigate the cabin where they find the secret crawl space inside the walls. That's where they find Corey's camera, which he dropped in fear. Going over the images taken by Corey, the police finds an eerie photograph of a person with long hair and a sharp, creepy stare, looking very similar to the painting titled as Self Portrait. This is a big lead and discovery, with the police sharing this photo everywhere as the prime suspect. The new video shows the side of the police now and their new efforts of finding the culprit. Private investigator Sean Kane has been working closely with the police to locate several victims linked to the paintings. Unfortunately, Sean himself seems to become a victim as he goes missing. The latest body that he found belonged to a man called Tom Harris. The killer had infiltrated Tom's apartment by climbing the drain pipe, whereas aftermath, a large pile of hardened candle wax is found. The body was found inside it, having dismembered arms. The cause of death was ruled as suffocation. Inside the wax, we also find the third amputated arm, which they don't know whom it belongs to. Right after this discovery, investigator Sean goes missing from his own house. The neighbors only notified the police after hearing his dog bark nonstop for nine hours. When the police arrived at the scene, they found the poor dog having all legs broken, who luckily still survived. Going in, they find a large blood trail leading from the bedroom to the kitchen, as if the killer injured and incapacitated Sean in his bedroom and dragged him to the kitchen when he stuffed him somewhere and took him. While struggling for his life, Sean leaves behind a clue for the police, drawing number two on the wall with his own blood, trying to help police catch the psychopath in his last living moments. What could number two mean? Does that mean the perpetrators are actually two people rather than one? Sadly, the police find something they wish that they would never, a painting in the bedroom dedicated to Sean, titled The Man in the Pipe, revealing the method of death and where they could potentially find the body. At this point, Sean's fate was already sealed. Sean had installed surveillance in his house just a few days ago, which captures a photo of the perpetrator who broke in from the basement, a photo with an unnaturally large smile not resembling the suspect from before, showing someone looking different, as if being a different person. Moving on to the next video called Witness, we learn about the disappearance of Tina Rosenberg and her boyfriend, Jack Stryker, who planned a road trip and took Tina's little sister, Flora, along with them. Their car was found in the woods, with the inside showing signs of struggle. They also found a painting called Flower Face Flora, a disturbing image with a mutilated face. As the police search the car, they hear screams coming from the depths of the woods. They follow the sound and come to a grisly sight, finding Tina still alive, tied to a tree while having her feet and arms dismembered. The corpse of Flora is also found nearby, unfortunately having her face mutilated with a hammer. Tina informs the police the murderer is still around who possibly was in the midst of conducting his art and twisted masterpiece who gets interrupted in the act. This reveals how he enjoys keeping his victims alive as long as possible to make them suffer before eventually killing them. The police doesn't find the killer. They escort Tina back when they find another painting inside the car which had been planted not long ago with it being titled Long Jack depicting Jack. Jack Stryker. The police takes Tina's testimony on what she experienced. I remember walking up in the car. Jack was gone and I could hear someone approaching. Next thing I remember, I was tied to that tree. 
I was injected with something. I could hear my sister screaming. She was screaming for our mom. Oh, Flora. I don't know. I remember whispering and her face. Oh God, her face. <laughs> This is a police sketch of the murderer, based on Tina's description. The description reveals it matches the image taken by one of the victims, Corey, and a self-portrait painting, which means the killer is in fact a woman and not a man. We move on to the next video called Pigs. It's about former police officer Ian Ford and his wife May, who both went missing. The police going to their farm to investigate. They find the mutilated corpse of May, who has been rotting. The murder scene is too grisly to describe, but it involved a horse, a mattress, and May, who both were killed in an unspeakable way. They also find the remains of the Ford's granddaughter, who was killed as well. Going into a second stall, they find several dead pigs and faces, alongside an abnormally large carcass of a pig, where they find the corpse of Ian Ford, stuffed in. Investigating more, they find more body parts and eventually several paintings depicting the Fords and some other victims. May's painting is called Breeding Mount May, displaying the brutal way that she suffered and then killed. Fiona's painting, The Granddaughter, having a painting titled as The Four Holes Fiona, Ian's painting being called Ian the Pig, being a hybrid human and a pig, and many more grisly paintings showing the terror, fear, and, and pain. One of those paintings reveals what the killer wanted to do to Tina, who managed to survive with the police, interrupting the murderer. The killer wanted to keep Tina alive to witness the horror of mutilating the corpses of her boyfriend and sister and then removing her eyes, but thankfully the police find her before any of that happens, or at least for now. The police also finds a tape outside the farm, deep in mud, being badly damaged. Despite that, they manage to recover some of the footage, which is probably uh, of one of the victims, or maybe even the killer, having a large abnormal smile and teeth beneath, as if this is just a mask. Next video called Family is about another victim called Isabel Jackson, an elementary school teacher. She called 911 in the midst of the attack, but the address that she gave led the police to a different crime scene, not her own. It led to the residence of Janice, Paul, and their son, Zeke. They were of course depicted in previous paintings found in Forms Farm. Outside their house, they find bloodied garden shears, which happens to have been used in the murder. It turns out Janice had been pregnant with a daughter. The murderer used the shears to perform a botched surgery, taking the fetus out and mutilating it. The murderer used the part to choke the father while he was tied to the kitchen counter, watching it all unraveling. The son, Zeke, still remains missing. The police eventually track down Isabel Jackson's real address. Isabel and her husband Bruce were both found dead in their house. Inside Isabel's corpse, they find a note presenting the police with a riddle. I live where I can't breathe, and I eat without teeth. What am I? The police inspecting the crime scene find a pivotal clue that there must be more than just one killer as they find two sets of shoe prints. The reason to why Isabel gave the police the wrong address still remains a mystery. <laughs> Isabel? 
more and more victims are found linked to the painter killers. Dr. Fred Baker happens to be one of the new victims whose cat is missing, seemingly being also killed by the killers as they painted a picture of the cat. Another victim by the name George White suffered hundreds of stab wounds and had photos tucked inside his corpse. We move on to the next victim being a police dispatcher called Sarah Stone. She alongside her husband Michael Stone were abducted from their residence. The police finds the security camera footage confirming the culprits are a duo, with one seemingly being a man with a large creepy smile mask and the other being a woman with a deadly gaze. The authorities have clear images of the perpetrators now, moving closer to capturing them. The final video labeled Hill shows police footage of entering an abandoned paint factory where they got a tip for it. There they find remains of several victims. They go down into a storage unit which seems more appropriate to be called a cage room, where the victims were seemingly trapped in for days or weeks. Photos and evidence reveal the killers have physical intimacy with the mutilated corpses. They find remains of previous victims which reveals the killers were keeping them as trophies. The killers possibly left here amongst all the remains, bringing their disturbing fantasies to life. There are mattresses and several corpses all killed in variety of ways. There's also a painting room where there are several paintings and some still unfinished. Deeper down into the basement, more unknown and unidentified victims are found alongside Sarah and Michael Stone, the police dispatcher. There is evidence of cannibalism and severe torture. Going deeper into the sewer system, the police find writings on the walls. Once you've been to hell, you never come back. This is the same phrase a victim said in a police interview, probably the only surviving victim, Tina Rosenberg. Do you think that you've recovered from this ordeal? I'll never recover. I'll never be the same. Those people took me to hell. And once you've been in hell, you never come back. She was the one who witnessed her little sister brutally killed. That prompts the police to do a wellness check on Tina, sending the first responder, Officer Nathan Cole, to her residence, believing that the killers might be wanting to go back to finish what they started with her. Officer Cole hears screams from the house, who runs in, finding Tina's mother killed, while the killer couple are performing heinous acts on Tina, who is screaming and still alive. The man tries to charge at the officer, who shoots him down while the woman surrenders. The body of the male killer reveals to have belonged to a former police officer called Bill Collins, who went missing and presumed dead, who wore a mask while going on his hunts. That's kind of tragic and uh, crazy to think about, as Bill Collins was a family man, with his entire family being killed in uh, horrible, unspeakable ways, which means that he was the culprit to do such things. The other killer, Mona Lanius, the female killer, gets apprehended by the officer who confesses to more than 100 murders. She is now in custody awaiting trial. This is the story of the killer couple so far, with more videos possibly in the making, revealing the aftermath of her capture. And that's about it for this video, folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host, Star. Thanks for being here, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.